What's good YouTube? In this video, we're gonna be talking about communication. Listen, a lot of times when I'm on the calls with my clients, especially if it's a couple, and I ask them, hey, what's the biggest issue you have in your relationship, right? They always say, everyone always says communication. Everybody says communication, communication, communication. We just need to fix our communication. We need to get better communication. Um, I wanna remind people that the specifics are more important than the general term. Most people, when they say they need to improve their communication, have no plan for the specifics. And without the specifics, it's just an ambiguous general term that people lean on to explain why they don't get along. Okay, so uh, this video is gonna be about five ways to specifically attack improving your communication. I wanted to break these communication habits into five ways because to be honest, you know, uh, small bites at a time, is how you kind of get through a nasty meal. I feel like too many people would try to just be great or just tell their partner, hey, you need to be great at this tomorrow. You need to be better at this. And this all encompassing idea uh, full of a bunch of particular skill sets that they don't have and haven't developed and aren't even aware of because they're not thinking about all the specifics. They're thinking about the main idea, communication. So these are five skill sets that uh, make up a better communicative relationship. And I think these are five things that if you focus on them individually, you can actually become a much better communicator. But before I start, this video is sponsored by Aura. Are you worried about your personal information falling into the wrong hands? You should be. In 2022, it happened to over 40 million people. Stay protected with Aura. They are number one in identity theft and financial fraud protection. In today's digital age, hackers are more cunning than ever. Aura's advanced technology and expert team are here to defend you. With Aura, you'll get real-time alerts ensuring you always know when suspicious activity occurs and what to do about it. Want to know if your personal information has already been stolen? Sign up right now to see if you've been compromised. And if the worst happens, the 24-7 support team is just a call away, ready to help you resolve any issues quickly and efficiently. And if that's not enough, don't forget that Aura backs up their promises with $1 million worth of identity theft protection insurance. Sign up for Aura's two-week trial today and experience peace of mind like never before. Visit Aura.com forward slash Kev Hick today. Now onto this topic. Um, then I got a list here. So with that said, the first thing that I wrote down when I was thinking about this was conversational chemistry, right? What does that mean? Right. Obviously, it means the fluidity of conversation, the ease of uh, use uh, to a degree, uh, the ease of conversation with each other, how easy it is to talk to your partner or how, how hard it is, it, how difficult it is to have a discussion with them. One of the worst things that I see is two people who maybe have different interests or maybe have different speech patterns or communication styles just assume that they're not compatible and they don't have any conversational chemistry. Most of the time, conversational chemistry uh, boils down to either shared experiences or shared uh, interests, right? And too often, I find that couples don't work hard enough to find shared interests, to find things that pull them together, to figure out how they can uh, not only get on one accord, but start to have fun in similar ways together, uh, start enjoying life in, in ways as a unit, right? So they don't have chemistry because they're not into the same things. They don't even have the same passion about the same conversational subjects because they're just living separate lives as separate people. I mean, I know we meet strangers all the time that we can talk to for hours. That's great. But most of the time, especially after some time has passed, conversational chemistry may lapse. You need to redefine uh, what your interests are uh, that you would share together. You need to re uh, ignite the passion in your relationship by searching out new passions that you can share together. These types of uh, habits, patterns, and practices increase conversational chemistry, right? Uh, to, to be on one accord means to be sharing a thing. And that might be a thought, that might be a passion, that might be a hobby, that might be um, a lifestyle. But conversational chemistry becomes much easier when you've connected on a particular. Uh, too often, we just put down this idea that uh, our partner doesn't have any potential to stimulate us mentally. And once they feel like they're not stimulating us mentally, they just quit. Because <laughs> what's the use? It feels humiliating to, to be thought of as boring or insignificant or insufficient or incompetent in some ways. I, I hear a lot of this from uh, women, especially the more professional women. There's always an assumption that a man can hang with them uh, intellectually. And I think that uh, too often we focus so much on what we like that if our partner doesn't like talking about that, then we don't want to talk and we don't want to find new ways to connect with them, especially uh, through conversation. And so conversational chemistry needs to be uh, addressed uh, through finding new habits, new patterns, new practices, new hobbies, new interests that both of you can engage in. And those shared experiences 
make it easier to communicate. Those shared experiences make it easier to have a fluid conversation, right? A real back and forth instead of pulling teeth, trying to get to the next sentence with one another. So if you're having issues with the conversational chemistry, try those things before you throw away a good relationship. With that said, the second thing that people should focus on when we're talking about the particulars of communication is conversational depth. Too often I meet somebody who either because they resent their partner or because they have been burned in the past, uh, don't necessarily get deep with people. They avoid deep topics, deep subjects. Uh, they they don't want to necessarily reveal themselves. Uh, and, and because of that, it, the defense mechanism causes them to just keep everything surface area. Uh, other people aren't necessarily naturally inquisitive, but they will go there with you. You just have to kind of push the issue. Uh, but conversational depth, if you're having trouble communicating your relationship, conversational depth might be a problem, right? You might not feel connected to your partner because you don't feel like the conversation is really going anywhere. Everything's surface level. What'd you do today? How was your day? What happened at work? And that's about it. You don't necessarily get into the crux of, of uh, the humanity of a conversation and, and the, the human experience. Most people have to feel connected to a person to want to go deep. And so if you have an, a conversational depth issue, then you might have some resentment in your relationship. You might have some disinterest and some um, some some indifference going on in your relationship. You might not be um, completely committed to the growth of your relationship uh, and or your partner who is refusing to give you conversational depth could have, uh, for whatever reason, a weakness in that area and not know how important it is for you to feel connected through deep conversations. And so if communication right, is an issue. Again, when you're telling your partner, hey, we need better communication, don't use the ambiguous overarching term communication. Tell them, hey, I need deeper conversations. Let's practice having deeper conversations, right? And one of the ways that I learned uh, through, I don't know, maybe I read it in a book or something, uh, but I remember somebody specifically said, ask three questions. And usually those three questions will act, will lead to three more questions, right? I remember I used to watch Animaniacs as a kid. And um, one little girl in there, I don't know, I think it was like Dot, right? Yakko, Wacko, and Dot were the Animaniacs. And Dot would always ask why. And so they would meet some villain or some person that was doing something. And Dot would ask him a question. Hey, sir, why do you want to take over the world? And he'd be like, well, because I want to do this. And she'd be like, why? <laughs> and she would just keep saying why. And it would turn, he, they would obviously get pissed off. But in real life, why is an amazing question. Why opens you up to a lot of understanding and why stretches the conversation? Uh, because there's always a new why. There's always an, a reason to expound on a, on a topic or or, or an idea. If communication is an overarching issue in your relationship, okay, don't overwhelm your partner with the idea that they need to communicate better and don't overwhelm yourself with it. Focus on the particulars. Maybe we need to practice having deeper conversations Monday. Maybe we need to practice having a conversational chemistry or, or uh, adding something to our relationship that will lead to conversational chemistry on Tuesday, right? Or, or on Wednesday, whatever. Break up the, the goal of communicating better. And don't forget, sometimes people need to be triggered into going deep by talking about the things that they care about the most. And that's another issue in relationships. We don't care about the things that our passion, our, our partners are passionate about. So we don't ask questions. We don't really allow them to stretch themselves. And then when we're talking about something that's important to us, we want to have a deep conversation. It don't work like that. We both have to give each other uh, the the space and the bandwidth and the attention for the things that we're passionate about, respectively. And so uh, if you're having trouble achieving depth in conversation, maybe you're not addressing or showing enough interest in what your partner likes, and that makes them feel a little bit uh, resentful and they don't want to go deep about the things that are important to you or the ideas or, or, or overarching themes that maybe plague you know, your mind. They want to just keep it surface level because you don't seem to care about what they want. And so quiet resentment a lot of times is what kills communication and kills relationships. The fourth way that you can improve your communication or the fourth uh, specific uh, about communicating is conversational frequency. Okay, a lot of couples aren't talking enough. They're not speaking enough, 
right? They're not having enough conversations. They're too busy. Uh, the day-to-day -day minutia gets in the way. Maybe they talk a couple of times a week and they just come home and fall asleep. They're tired. They're busy. Scheduling conversations, scheduling quiet time where you could just sit next to each other or cuddle and not turn on the TV, not be doing something, not be on your phones, but just be speaking to each other, just be sitting in each other's energy until a conversation sparks. That's important. And a lot of times that space has to be planned. You need to have peace sometimes to settle into uh, having more conversation. You need to create opportunity through setting up downtime, right? Social downtime, away from the phones, away from the TV, away from whatever thing you do to keep your hands busy. Uh, sitting and being quiet with your partner long enough will start to spark communication and it will increase frequency. But that space and that quiet time needs to be frequently planned. Because to be honest, we only speak to each other as much as we have the opportunity to speak to each other. So you need to create the opportunity by creating the quiet time, putting it on the schedule. Reconnecting in this way also reduces anxiety quite a bit for both parties, especially as it pertains to how they think the relationship is going or just life in general. We all need time to rest. And sometimes we can rest in each other. So if you haven't, do your best to try to book quiet time with you and your partner where you don't have anything else to do that may increase conversational frequency. Moving on, the fourth specific or the fourth particular uh, is conversational length, right? Um, and don't think about it as we need to talk for a long time and that will improve our communication. Think about it more like when you have a doctor that has really good bedside manner and doesn't rush you out of the office. I don't know if any of you ever had a really shitty doctor who rushed you out of the office, didn't ask a lot of questions, wasn't really concerned about what you were talking about or what your concerns were, uh, gave you a prescription real quick or told you he'll be back or the PA was coming in and he just kind of rushed out. You didn't even really get no FaceTime with the doctor. We've all had professionals who we felt rushed by. Um, and that doesn't make us feel comfortable, right? Sometimes in relationships or when you're dating a person, you feel like you're on borrowed time. You feel like their attention is limited. You feel like they're preoccupied. You feel like they're distracted. You feel like they're not committed to having the conversation or gaining an understanding about whatever you're talking about. And so, again, this is one of the specifics to focus on. Maybe you're not going to be a great communicator just, you know, by wanting to be one tomorrow. But you can say, you know what, I am a little bit um, quick. I am a little bit uh, rushed in conversation. Maybe I don't make him feel like, or maybe I don't make her feel like she has enough time to get out her idea. Maybe I'm cutting her off to get to the point. Maybe I'm correcting her before she's completed, kind of working through her idea. You know, a lot of us work out our mind, or a lot of us work out our thoughts out loud. We have to talk out uh, our thoughts to make sense of them. And so sometimes it comes out a little fumbled, a little jumbly at first, but then eventually we get to our point and we kind of hit our stride. That happens with me a lot of times. That's why I ramble so much and my videos might be longer than other people's. I don't know. The point is this, in a relationship, a person needs to feel like you have time for them whatever their style of communication. Um, like I have a couple of friends who, who stutter. Just like it's rude as hell to try to interrupt someone when they're stuttering to give them the word that they're having trouble with as if they don't know what word comes next. It's really rude and, and, and it feels a lot more dismissive than people think to rush your partner through a conversation or to not let them get their point across. Or especially if there's a conflict, not let them say everything they have to say and, and say their piece. Um, rushing conversations is what I mean by conversational length. When you're having a conversation or when you're preparing to have a conversation, please set enough time aside that you don't have to rush them. You don't have to cut them off. You don't have to correct them. You can let them express themselves fully and completely. And you can take that in. It's too many, it's too many people who feel like they're on borrowed time with their partner. Uh, I know we're busy. I know we're trying to be successful. I know we're chasing the American dream. All of these uh, ideas, you know, in, in life uh, and even in other countries, they have their own dreams. Uh, but we have to make time for the people who are important to us. And you don't know what you got till it's gone. It's one of those things where you wish you could sit down and, and listen to a stupid ass story about how somebody pissed your woman off at work when she leaves you. Right. You wish you could sit down and listen to how your man's favorite team got their asses blown out because of the refs cheating for the other team after he leaves you, after he felt like you didn't care about what he cared about. You didn't hear him. You didn't care. All of a sudden now you care. Um, if you have communication issues in your relationship, focus on the particulars. What do you suck at? Because if you have communication issues in your relationship, I can guarantee both of you are deficient in one of these five areas. You're both underwhelming in one area or another, and it makes the other person feel a little bit resentful or a little bit less enthused about trying to be better in the area that they suck at. 
So like a good doctor with good bedside manner, be patient and give your partner as much time as they need to get stuff out and express themselves. Uh, the fifth particular or specific that will help you when you focus on improving your communication. Again, and this is day by day, pick one to focus on. You're not gonna be great tomorrow, but you can focus on one specific every day to try to figure out how to become better and be more connected to your partner. So again, with that said, the last specific or particular here is vulnerability slash transparency. Uh, a lot of people don't have a problem with conversational chemistry. They don't have a problem with conversational depth as long as the subject matter isn't them, as long as it doesn't require them to be vulnerable. Some people are really good listeners and they'll listen to you cry. They'll listen to you break down. They'll listen to you express your passions and vent and whatever, but they won't give you anything back. So it doesn't feel reciprocated. It feels like you're being observed in conversation and, and instead being connected with um, vulnerability and or transparency uh, are two huge issues that people have in, in relationships. Right. So transparency, uh, meaning I don't tell you uh, what you need to know. I don't give you pertinent information and vulner vulnerability is I really don't share of myself while we're in the conversation. Either of those ideas uh, can plague your conversation and plague your uh, communication in your relationship. When you're not transparent with a person, they feel like you're hiding something. It makes them feel irritated. It makes them feel dismissed. It makes them feel disrespected. Right? It makes them feel like they're uncared for. When you're not vulnerable with a person, it makes them feel like they can't connect with you, like you're not growing, like you're not close, like you don't love them because we want to feel connected to the people we love. So vulnerability might be a man's issue more often than the woman's issue, unless that woman has a traumatic dating past, right? Men are taught to be tough, not to be vulnerable, uh, to hold it inside, to deal with our own shit, to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, to suck it up, right? So we have trouble being vulnerable. A lot of times women who have traumatic relationship experiences uh, grow very callous and they stop being vulnerable to men who truly want to love them when they find a good man when they do find a good man, they're not vulnerable with him. They don't open up. That man doesn't feel like he's making progress, right? So that specific and particular vulnerability, it means a lot to people because it, it makes them feel more connected and more in love. And transparency, again, most of the time you have a, a woman or a man who's been cheated on who need more information, not less information. Where are you going? Who are you going with? Where are you been, right? The basics sometimes. And then other times it's, hey, how do you feel about this? Right. Be transparent. Did I upset you? Am I bothering you? Am I doing everything right? Some people need more feedback than others. And so when you're not willing to give feedback again, that puts a it stunts the growth of communication in other areas, because while that person might be very transparent and they may even be very vulnerable when they don't feel like you're being transparent and you're vulnerable. They may they may not go as deep with you because they don't they don't expect you to really reciprocate. They may not try as hard to find things that you both like because they don't feel like you're really giving to that part of the relationship. They may have less frequent conversations with you, which might bother you because they don't feel like you're going anywhere or you're giving anything real to the conversation. You're not being genuine when you're there or you're not telling them what they need to know or you're not telling them anything important because you don't trust them. And so they feel dismissed. Again, when you have communication issues in your relationship, it means both you and your partner are deficient in one of these five areas. And sometimes your deficiency triggers their deficiency and vice versa. So if you want a better relationship and better communication, check yourself and be honest about where on this list you fall short and try to improve that one day at a time. Anyway, I hope this helps. Sorry for the long video. <laughs> Follow me at KFIG24 on Instagram. If you need coaching, go to KFIG.com. I'll get with y'all later.